Hi, Chrissy. This little doggone thing that they changed with the, I don't know if it's the phone update or what it is, but I just started a little late because I was talking to these two lovely ladies that are running the little thing here. And so I don't know if you guys saw my thing. So I am here today and I'll give everybody a minute to get in there. Um, I am here at the Jardin des Champs Elysees because they have a special thing that goes just until uh, six o'clock tonight about the Wallace Fountains, because it was 150 years ago this month that the first Wallace Fountain appeared. So I wanted to do this little video in here today and outside, actually inside, some of the stuff is kind of, is not as cool as some of the stuff outside, some of the plaques. So it's really, um, some really cool stuff. So I will uh, give everybody a second to get in here. Let's see if I have, everybody. I had to race. I had a tour this afternoon and then I had to race home because my eye will not stop watering. And then I dropped my glasses and I broke my glasses. And then I had to race home and I literally had five minutes to get my stuff and turn around and race over here to the, the Jardin. So I'll go ahead and get started because there's so much to here to show you guys. So this little tent here is in the Jardin. And we are just right off the of Champs Elysees. One of the rare times I ever come over here. I think the last time I was here was a year ago for the crystal, but they have this really cool thing. And so this little plaque here, I kind of was like, oh, hold on. they're all about water, um, but different like uh, vessels and water bottles and all this kind of stuff. But they have this cool little video. And then they also have these um, really awesome versions of the caryatides. And so here's a little video about it. I'll let you watch it for a second. I like the red one the best. There's the karyatids. Um, but these are still made by the same foundry, GHM, which is one of the oldest uh, foundries in all of Europe. They still make the current fountains today because there are still ones that are getting made and put up. But I'll let you watch this little thing. Can you guys hear me? I don't know if I... Yes. Okay, thank you. Because I can't see the little comments. I don't know what they did on this update. So I'll show you the thing outside where it says this is all done like with sand. And the, the deal's outside, so it's really cool. I basically had about six minutes before we started to race around and take photos of all of the plaques and then I'll have time to read them later. Um, but it's really cool. I mean, I love the Wallace Fountains and these ladies. I, was, I bought the little book because I had the book and of course I left it in uh, Portland. So I bought another one of the little books about the Wallace Fountains and um, was talking to them and said I was going to make a video and they were very excited. So I kind of get to, just like last week with, uh, I kind of get to ex explore some of these things. Um, but it's all about cast iron. So as you know, the Wallace Fountains themselves came out of the fact of that there's too many drunks in Paris, basically. <laughs> that, look at these, how cool cool this is. So that's like right when they come out of the mold, the first stage. So before they cut everything away, I'll go back and forth here. This is second. So it's kind of rough. I just tucked her. Oh, look at there she is, all cleaned up and in her ver wagon. This looks like over here, this looks like a Han Solo. <laughs> That's a much rougher version. The little ladies were very cute. They liked it because I was wearing, I'm wearing a very bright shirt today. But I'll go outside. I'll take you outside and show you all of these great little things. So we're, this is, uh, we're on the north side of the champs Elysees. So over there, that direction through the trees is where Elysee Palace is. Um, it is a wonderful day in Paris today. It's been blue sky and it was like the perfect temperature and it was a little breezy. It was gorgeous day for walking around. 
So here you have the sand casting technique. So they have these really great little plaques and I took pictures of all of them and I'll try uh, to post them so you could see and read about all of the details. But it's kind of cool. I love it when they have this stuff. So GHM, that says GHM, that's the foundry that's done them since they started. And there's even things about um, Richard Wallace, Wallace himself. So this is how they assemble all the pieces of it. Look at the black one. So the color, the Ver Wagon green, is the same color as you see all this stuff. So the lamp posts, the benches that are in Paris, the bouquinis, um, the kiosk, all of that stuff is all that color. It's called Ver Wagon. Um, green wagon because they say that is the color of the uh, wagon that Louis the Sixteenth was taken to his uh, death on the uh, Place de la Concorde. Kind of a, a, a grim, grim way to mark that. Oh, that's over in front of that was in front of Notre Dame because that's the Place uh, de behind it where it's all frozen. Those there are not. Uh, statues there anymore, fountains there anymore. This is a misting feature, a push button installed on the Rue de Tonte. So when he first created this, it was because it was during the um, Franco-Prussian uh, conflict and it was really difficult to get clean water in Paris. And so it was cheaper for people to buy beer and alcohol and so public drunkenness was quite the thing. And so he decided because he inherited a bunch of money um, from uh, a friend of the family that he was raised, but most people think it was his father, um, but he uh, inherited a ton of money. He was one of the few uh, British people in Paris at the time that they still loved because he really gave back. He built a hospital, helped take care of people that were wounded in the siege. And so he decided he wanted to do something um, so he ended up getting, creating these fountains to bring water. Um, during the siege, uh, one of the aqueducts was destroyed. So that's what also uh, basically impeded water getting into the city. So he had, he wanted some fountains made. There's four different Wallace fountains. This is of course the most famous one. Um, there's a wall mounted one. There's the only one of those left and it's near the Chardon de Pont. Um, then there is those smaller ones that you see in a lot of the gardens. There's some in the Tuileries. Actually, there's one right there. You see that? That is actually a Wallace fountain. And then there is also one that looks like this, but it's columns. That one is uh, very rare to find. And then these ones that are really colorful. So there's like red and pink and yellow and orange and bright blue and bright green. Those are mostly all in like the 13th. I have not seen the red one yet. And I definitely want to go and find that one. So you see all of these little, look at Bateau Lavoie. We have seen that one. We did, I think our very first live video from right there, the Bateau Lavoie. Look at that cute little guy in his roller skates. That is a Robert Guadno. Very cool, look at the drawing. It's in the carnival. So the original one, one of the original ones they took out and they moved that to the carnival light just to just back in the spring oh i missed this one earlier oh so they test the water so a lot of people think that like the water i have friends that live here that are like they won't drink the water because they say it's not good but i the water tastes fine it's actually they've been it's tested and they say it's one of the best uh metropolitan waters in the world there was some tv show I saw on Netflix or Amazon or one of those, and it had um, Zach something. He was some actor that was in Disney movies, but he went around the world and he did one that was in Paris. It was all about the water. It was really interesting if I can remember what it is, or if you guys remember, put it in the comments. Um, it was, uh, well, we didn't need to see that, but we, uh, he, uh, it was really interesting. And they were saying how the water in Paris is actually very healthy and very drinkable. So they used to have, um, they, and you can see on some of them, you see like a hook that's on here and they used to have two metal uh, cups that hung down on chains. And in 1951, they got rid of those cause that's just gross. Um, but you can still, they, they turn these on from mid-March to uh, beginning of November, mid-November, depending on the level. 
um, and then they're turned off. And so, but you could go in there. I've used them, filled up my water bottles with them, with water. It all tastes great. And there are some that aren't just there around the world. So here's one that's in Germany. Here's one that's Canada. There's one in New Orleans. Um, there's one in Los Angeles. So there's some in Canada, all over Europe. So there are some all over, but Richard, Sir Richard Wallace, he well, had this idea. And so he started sketching it out. He had went into, you guessed it, the most inspiring place in the world, the Louvre. And he went in there and he saw um, this, uh, the, um, which I call it the monument. Um, I am just on fumes at this point. He, he did the, mon the monument that he saw that was of three caryatides holding up what was at one point a bronze urn. And in that urn was going to be the heart of Henry II and eventually the heart of Catherine de Medici if she actually had one. They would go inside of there and be together for eternity. Well, he saw this in the Louvre and it inspired him because it's three ladies, not four, but they're holding up this urn. And so he had that idea that he would, um, he thought this is a perfect idea for that. So he had a friend of his, we'll wait till we could sneak over to this other side. So he knew sculptor, um, Charles Laborg and Charles Laborg helped him kind of fine tune the idea. <clears throat> and if you really see it, <coughs> excuse me. But if you remember, if you guys watched the walk we did months ago, we were up in the ninth um, and we were up there near, um, just right below Pigalle and right below um, the Moulin Rouge. And I talked to you, told you guys about the story of this woman that lived in the apartment that was right there. She ended up being the like muse for all of these, for like Baudelaire and everything. Well, she had a 10 year relationship with Richard Wallace or Richard Wallace. And she, um, I have tried to find information and I even asked these little ladies and they didn't know either of who the model was for the Karyatids. They don't know, but Richard Wallace was involved with this woman, her name was Apollon uh, Sabatier. She was this beautiful model. She ended up modeling for Auguste Plessinier, who did the very uh, lovely and slightly erotic uh, uh, statuette of a woman bitten by a serpent. It's in the Orsay, I've shared it before, we've talked about it on the podcast, where it's a woman kind of twisting in ecstasy. Then there's a very teeny tiny snake wrapped around her wrist and it became controversial because when you look at the back of her leg there's cellulite and so they thought it was a live cast of her body and so it was really controversial because that was just not something you did and so but she had this relationship with Wallace at the same time that these were being created so I try to do some investigative reporting and find out because I think it's her I think the karyotide is her and I will put some evidence out there to see if that is it. But you can see them here. And this side's really cool, which is where everybody's standing. Um, and this one, you can actually see the column one. You see in there the column, the column Wallace. I have never seen that out in the wild. Then again, we have that one. That one and the Wallace with the uh, carry tees is the one you see the very most. Since 1875, there were 54 Karyatid models, 63 by 1880. In 1877, to meet these demands, the municipality had engineered, designed a new standpipe featuring motifs inspired by Wallace. We'll go around this side. So I really want to show you because the four Karyatid, if you look, they're all a little different. And they show them here. Do you have simplicity, kindness, sobriety, and charity? And simplicity has her eyes closed and her right knee out. Charity has her eyes open and her left knee out. Sobriety has her eyes closed, her right knee out, and that she's draped. And then kindness has her eyes open and she's fully draped. So did you know that? I think that's so cool. Oh, and look, she, look at this. 
She symbolizes spring. Charity symbolizes summer. Sobriety symbolizes autumn. Maybe that should be winter. And kindness symbolizes winter. I think sobriety should be winter. Well, no, because we're stuck inside. What else do you want to do? But isn't that the coolest thing? I just love that. So now when you go see them, now you know. But I wish I had a photo of the statue. If you look on my website, if you look under live tours in Paris and scroll way down to the one we did on saint George, you will see I did put the bust of Apolline next to a Wallace fountain. You be the judge. I think we figured it out before they did. <laughs> But you can see at the top, it has like little dauphin. And there's the ring on that one, the lower one. You could kind of see the ring. And then you have, here's the rise of public health concerns. So the Seine was too, like if they, they couldn't drink water from the Seine because it was gross. Um, much like it is still today, but you know, they are, they all, they say they're going to clean it out and they're going to use it for uh, the Olympics. And somebody else is making a video. So here's the wall one. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's on Rue uh, Geoffrey Saint Hilaire. And that is the one just right outside of the Jardin des Plantes. Yeah, lovely that. I that little that used to be like kind of an event space restaurant. I don't think it's I've never really seen it open. There's people drinking out of the cup with the chain. I guess that gives a whole new uh, version of uh, standing around the water cooler. Because the first was installed on the Boulevard de la Villette in July 1872. Did you see that? It was soon reported crowds gathering around them and even corals breaking out in some instances during hot spells. So aqueducts. This is only up for today and tomorrow, or yesterday and today, which is kind of a bummer. These are quite the fancy little plaques. Too bad they can't move them over into like the uh, Carnival or something. Napoleon decreed on 2nd of May, 1806, provided for the opening of 15 new fountains. And Richard Wallace, he ended up eventually going back to London and there's the Wallace collection. There's a museum there that has the Wallace collection. He ended up getting married. So poor Apolline. But look, there's the uh, New Easter Saint, the Boulevard Richard Wallace. Let's see. There were some people waiting to get in. This I'm gonna to have to, Chrissy, we're gonna to have to, I'm gonna to have to have you use you as a tester someday <laughs> um, because it doesn't show me like it used to when there's somebody waiting. So sorry about that. If you're just getting in, I didn't get any notification. He established field hospitals, donated money and necessities like coal and timber for fuel, started subscriptions to support the wounded or the destitute and walked from town hall to town hall across Paris to distribute money for food vouchers. What a guy. Richard Wallace was a good guy. Here he is right here. There's Sir Richard Wallace. Editorial. Richard Wallace, he sketched the designs himself, so paid for the first 50. That was a lot of money. So here you can really see them. Look how lovely they are. The Dauphin. Oh, and here we have 
Lady Wallace. Sir Richard Wallace there on the right, Lady Wallace. This is bust of Richard Conway, Marquis de Hertford. Oh, that's when he died. He's buried, he's buried here in uh, Paris. Oh, he bought the Chateau de Becatel. Died there on August 25th, 1870. Oh, that's where Richard Seymour Conway died, leaving his inheritance. That's pretty cool. But you even have, so these are the gondola benches. That's what they're called, gondola benches. They're also in the Verwagon. Let's go check out over here. That's a mighty huge piece. We're not going to walk towards the American embassy because they'll try to shoot me again. They're not friendly at the American embassy. Even when you say, je suis américain, they don't care. They will chase after you with machine guns and make you delete the photo of the building. Like I care anyway to have a picture of that building. I don't understand that you can walk up to the door of the Ibiza Palace and take a picture, but you can't take a picture 30 feet away at, uh, at the American embassy. So we don't even wanna to try to go down there because this is the road that leads you back there. But look at how pretty that building is. So I can't really even see comments. Let's see if we could try this because then we could do a choose your own adventure of where we're going. If it lets me see. Dean, I always see you right there first and foremost. And so if it lets me, I'm afraid I don't want to do anything and like delete it, but so maybe somebody could just get on and say, so do you want to head towards the Seine or down the Champs-Élysées? You guys decide. Who's your own adventure here? The sun. All right. Oh, thanks, Chrissy. The Champs Elysees is. It's going to be crowded today. It is. It's actually, you know, today, how lovely it is, has been. Um, it's still like you still don't need a coat right now. Um, it is definitely getting more overcast. But it uh, just even my tour today, I took them from the Luxembourg all the way to the Palais Royale. And it just actually wasn't too bad as far as people. But we could walk over and through here and down to the Seine. So I could Speaking get out of tours, this way. I cannot yes. wait to do my tour with you, even though it's in June so far away. I'm so <laughs> excited. Dad, I can't wait. That'll be so fun. In the Louvre. So last night, I don't know if Angela's on. So last night with Angela, I went to the Palais Royale and ate at that super cool kind of restaurant that's called uh, the 22 Club. And it was really neat. So you go up into an apartment in the Palais Royale and the food was amazing. It's by the people that own Ellsworth and Verjou. And uh, Verju still is not open. It closed before COVID for remodeling and it's still not open. And uh, apparently they're going through a dispute with the landlord. Um, so sadly it's not open right now, but Ellsworth, if you've not been to Ellsworth, put that on the top of your list and go there and have the fried chicken. It's just like a little tiny plate um, of just like two pieces of fried chicken but it's like the most amazing fried. It's like the only thing that's close to American that I will have. <laughs> and it is delicious, it's so good. But the 22 Club is in an apartment of the Palais Royale. So this guy owns the apartment. You come in off the street on the back road and you just basically go up. He has the whole entire thing, like from the top to the street. And um, he uh, basically, he couldn't get, because of COVID, he wasn't able to get over here and just start um, the remodel. So he said to his friends, you wanna use it. So they set up this restaurant in there sort of. So it's 22 seats, um, two rooms. There's the uh, Arc de Triomphe. It's like the flags in the center. Um, 
two rooms and uh, it was really nice. We sat in the room with, I think about 10 people. So it was a little bit more intimate, which was really nice because everybody that we met there were so lovely. Almost all of them, pretty much everybody was American, but one person. Um, the food was out of this world and it's paired with wine. They uh, bought a farm at the start of COVID. And so out on this farm, they do everything from raising chickens and growing everything you possibly could think of. Their neighbor grinds flowers and uh, flour and wheat. I was about to run over. Flour and wheat. And so like they had this pasta that was made with 26 yolks from their chicken eggs and flour. And that was it. But it was, oh, it had shiitake mushrooms. It was out of this world. It was so good. So it's something they're only going to be doing it most likely for a few more months. Um, but if you do come, I will put a, I'm going to post pictures of it later and put a link to it. So if you are here and you have a chance to go, when they open up reservations, they go very, very quick. Um, so if you do have a chance to go, definitely check it out because it was amazing. And you're sitting in the Palais Royale overlooking the trees of the Palais Royale. So it was pretty uh, cool. So that, that tent there is not for Fashion Week, surprisingly. It's they're taking down something that had them there. And there's the Crayon over there and the Hotel de la Marine, which if you have not gone there yet, you must. It's fantastic. So we'll head over here. <clears throat> My voice is back for the most part, but when I spend the whole day talking, it gets a little uh, gets a little rough. Oh, look at this. I love finding these. So you know the obelisk was at one point for the year 2000, was going to be a sundial. So in some of the parts that aren't run over by traffic, you can still see some of these markers. I came across that like six years ago walking and I was like, what the heck is that? And then found out, but look, it says Skoda. That's still there from, I think the tour, Tour de France. There she is over there to the Eiffel Tower. The leaves are all changing rapidly, but I think it's just as much because it's been so dry as much as it's been uh, autumn. The fountain. So if you got in here late, I'm so sorry about that. We didn't see the notification, but um, it should be recording. So it does, it has better luck when it's just, I'm doing it by myself instead of Kate and I. Um, there's Bordeaux. So we you can see the beginning of it. So here around the Place de la Concorde, you have these statues and they were at that period the major cities of France. So you have Bordeaux. And there's one in the very far corner for Strasbourg. And um, they had to cover it. They covered it up during World War I, covered her in black cloth because it kept going back and forth. So when it went back to Germany, it covered up. And that one is based on Jean, who was the longtime mistress of Victor Hugo. And she was first the mistress of James Pradier, who was the one who designed that one. I really hope it's not gonna rain. <laughs> so I see, hopefully if there's anybody else here while I'm But it's been a lovely day. The weather, of course, the uh, iPhone weather makes it look like it is going to rain every day. And then, of course, it doesn't. So you guys are all professional Parisians. 
you know not to trust those silly phone forecasts because it's been lovely. There was yesterday, maybe I think a minute or two of misty, but that was it. And it was just as I took people into um, Sansu Police. And when we came out, it was done. So here we are. And how about we just walk down there by it? I'll go over here and we'll just walk down the sun for a bit. I'm gonna buy class, I'm probably gonna get run over again. We could hustle down here and then walk across the water, walk against the water. Hopefully it won't be too windy. Next week, I can't do the live video because I have, uh, starting Wednesday, a group of eight ladies coming to Paris that I will be with day and night. And that goes for a week. And so I won't be able um, to do a live next Sunday, but make sure you follow me on Instagram because I'm posting videos. I just made about a 12 minute video just walking around the Luxembourg today. So make sure you're following because I'm sharing video and content every day. And I have so many things I've been recording that I haven't even shared yet. So there's lots of stuff to see and to share with you guys. Go down here. We could get down most of the way, I think. Look at that. She looks lovely. So did you guys all see that they're shutting off the lights a little sooner? So all the monuments are shutting off an hour earlier. So the last sparkle of the Eiffel Tower is at midnight now, when it used to be one o'clock. And then they're also shutting off the lights on the Louvre and a bunch of other buildings. Last night, um, when I was walking back from the Palais Royal, they were filming something at the Louvre, so you couldn't even walk through it or around it without them telling you to get to the other side of the street. So there's some. It was a really huge production of something going on. <laughs> so the Louvre last night was really, really lit up, but. I don't think we've ever walked down here on one of the live videos. I think we tried. We did it one time near uh, below on the Ile de la Cité. Who would want to live down here? Would you guys want to live on a boat? I think it'd be kind of awesome. Until the sun, until the sun rises. <laughs> but I wonder if people like, you know, they're down here drunk. They just like jump on the top of that boat. That would be kind of annoying. I just love coming down under the bridges because I love all the bridges. And this is the bridge that some of the stones originally were from the Bastille. I don't know how much of that's actually left, but maybe there's some. Look at that. That's how cool. Let's we'll just, you know. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm just capturing the city for you. Look at that little car up there. How did they get that off? I don't know how they get that car off of there. What are any of these people? Take these boats down the river. So we're heading towards this Orsay, the Palais Bourbon over there, getting a big uh, upgrade on this facade.
This side, this isn't too bad because it's a, oh, there's a kitty cat sleeping. Apparently it's very photogenic. Um, this one's not too bad because it's not all, uh, it's a giant cat. Um, this one isn't all the giant cobblestones when we get closer to the Pont des Arts. That one gets really kind of difficult. Hang on, we're all catty wampus. That one gets kind of difficult to walk without constantly looking down because it's just kind of treacherous. Hey, look, they have Luxembourg chairs. I know that uh, I have my glasses in my mouth. Some of these are of, I've seen before houseboats on the Seine on Airbnb which I think would be kind of fun. Like even if you did that for like a couple of days, I mean, what if I had a houseboat docked near the Louvre? Just get up and walk out and go to the Louvre right away. It'd be pretty great. I mean, I'm, 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 it's not like I'm a, I'm a 10 minute walk to the Louvre. It's not exactly a stretch. But this one's kind of nice. Like they have a little, kitchen galley up here. Lovely little garden. This is this is pretty quiet down here. We could go up and over uh, here. Or we could keep going down a bit. You guys want me to go down to the Pont des Arts or go across here? So we'll um, to do these. I can't do them on YouTube yet because I have to have a thousand subscribers and I don't have that yet. So doing them on YouTube would be easier. Um, Facebook and Instagram each has its challenges because not everybody's on both. But I do like doing it this way because it records them and then it goes on, then it goes on YouTube. But if you guys wanted to help me out, share it get people to subscribe to the YouTube, my YouTube, Potty and Blue Blanc Rouge, get them to subscribe to that. And then we could eventually just do them on YouTube. And then it's much easier um, for you guys just to go in there and see that it's coming up and it's live. That would be fantastic if you guys could help me out, share it. So I could bring this to you. One of the ones consistently bringing you Paris videos. I do love walking up from the bottom of this bridge. We'll do this, we'll go over here and then we'll go on the other side because then we get a, the sights of the view or the Louvre. Oh, it's quite. I don't like to walk too close because I have to see if somebody would push me. <laughs> I'm not afraid of the water. I'm just afraid of walking close to it. I think some, some jerko. So what's really great is this, the passerelle, Leopold, goes up there. You go up towards the Tuileries. Go up here. I just think it's really cool how it's, done because they get closer because then they just turn flat. Um, but what's great is this is one of those bridges that was still covered with this dumb locked and they're getting rid of all those here and replacing those as well with the plexiglass. Let's go to this side. Look at that. Oh. How pretty. 
So see, they start to get flatter, flatter. And so it's just a ramp. But see all of the plexiglass they used to have. There might still be some pieces. But no, now it's all plexiglass. It looks so much better. But then there's still people that do this. Let's go to this side. Oh. What time is it now? Oh, just said, call me into the Orsay and show you the <coughs> sculpture of the woman bitten by the serpent. We're at 545 your time. Oh. oh, well, then they won't let me in. Thank you, Chrissy. Look at that. Oh. All the lovely things in one view. Yeah, they don't let 545 is the breaking point. They should let me come in and stay a half an hour after closing, just like they let us come in a half hour before opening as a member. But they're at the end of the day, they're like, just get out and go home. <laughs> go down here, see old TJ. Oh, it's so much better on this bridge without those, because they were really ugly metal uh, sections. It looked close to like chicken wire. <laughs> so the fun little things on the, I'd love to take you down to the little, uh, what used to be the, Part of the road that connected you down to the K when uh, before they closed it to traffic um, because they've added that whole entire section they've done street art in there it's going to be up there for the next couple of years so when you come definitely walk through that but there's no signal so here is Thomas Jefferson TJ who loved Paris. But what's really cool is this has the design of Monticello on there. That looks like the back of Monticello. I remember going there when I was like 14 years old on a school trip. Um, and I remember thinking it was so cool. And I was like a dorky kid that was really into the history. <laughs> All the other 14 year old kids were like, this is stupid. <laughs> I thought it was cool. But I just was in here last weekend for Patreon weekend. And I shared a bunch of the photos, but I shared so many that uh, apparently I've reached the limit on Instagram stories. But too many photos. And so as soon as I posted them, it basically was deleting them. So I need to share them again. But it is really cool inside. It's not very big. This is a huge rotund on this side. And you walk through, there's a bedroom over here on this side. It's not very big. It's really pretty though inside. And um, it's also connected to the museum. And I've been trying to get back to the museum since I went there in 2016. Um, and the museum's really interesting, has all of the different uh, medals. The Legion of Honor has a bunch of ones that were given to like all the past presidents. Um, Napoleon was the one who installed and created the Legion of Honor. So we'll keep going down here a little bit for 10 or so more minutes along the sun. Yesterday, oh, oh boy.
Something's happening. Yeah. I guess if you like the French siren noise, which we all do, that really uh, did it for you. <laughs> um, it reminds me yesterday, um, I had a tour and they were staying in the Latin Quarter and I was taking them back to their hotel when we ran into the techno parade, which they haven't done for two years. And boy, was that fun. I took some video of that. I haven't posted it yet. Um, but huge, huge, like double-decker buses, flatbed trucks all decked out, techno music blaring, people dancing in the street, apparently on a lot of drugs. <laughs> but here, of course, is the Orsay. I just went and saw the Edward Munch exhibit the other day. It was really amazing. I did not actually know that much about him. Um, you know, most everybody knows of him of the scream. So I didn't actually know all this other stuff. He has some really amazing uh, paintings and he even did one that's his version of the death of Marat, which was really cool next month opens the rosa bonar and she is an amazing was an amazing artist she painted animals nature scenes we did a podcast episode about her probably well over a year ago uh, but she's really really amazing i can't wait to see that one when that opens um, in a few weeks but she was uh really cool she was around that same time as george Saint, and so she uh was one of those people that would wear pants when it was outlawed. Women could not wear pants unless they got permission from a permit from the police to actually wear pants. But she did because um, she was in and out of all of the barns and farms in all of the yucky, mucky, farmy things. And so it was easy for her to wear pants. So George Sam just said, I don't care, I'm wearing pants. George Sand did it mostly because it was cheaper. She had a ton of money. She came from a family, had a lot of money, but she married this loser and he basically kind of uh, caught, caught up and he didn't give her access to her money when she left him because he was sleeping with everything that walked, including all of the uh, staff of their house. And so she's like, forget this, I'm going to Paris. And then it was cheaper to buy men's pants and men's clothes. Than it was, but sure, most of the like the statue of her in Luxembourg, she's actually wearing a big ball gown. And there's my beloved, I'll be there tomorrow. I love that the Orsay just keeps all everything on the facade. So, normally, when you used to be up there and you're up on the impressionist and you could look out here and you could look out you see across the city you can see the back of these lovely uh statues um but they've since the spring have covered all of them up um the doors and windows and uh, they're doing work out there so you see all the scaffolding that's covered up there so they're doing work out there so i'm hoping that they uncover it eventually because it was always fun to just pop out and look out one of the windows to see um, see the city because it's such a great view. You get to see out over the Tuileries. You get to see soccer curl, everything right here. So I hope you guys like seeing all that Wallace Sound stuff. It was really cool. Um, there is a little book that I bought show you i have this book already but it's i don't i didn't either it's in a box that i still haven't shipped um, but it has a bunch more information about it so i'm going to look in there and see if i could find the info about who was the model i think it's her so when it was the palais d'orsay it did stretch all it did stretch farther down there is a building that's down here a little farther that the Orsay owns. Um, and somebody gave a very vast, huge donation. And it's just a couple of buildings down on the side. And they are going to turn it into a research library, which I can't wait to be able to go in there. The other uh, 
a new thing that just opened that you, if you were coming, when you come to Paris to go check out is the Bibliothèque Nationale, Richelieu. Um, that just reopened last weekend. So now you could go in there anytime. You could go in there and use the library for free. Um, they'll do small exhibits. And, um, but you could just go in there and look at it. And it's got that beautiful, huge reading room with the, uh, uh, the scrolled iron work on the ceiling. It's really beautiful. And that is just right up there behind the Palais Royale, right across from Willie's Wine Bar, another one of my favorites. So go to Willie's Wine Bar for lunch and pop over to the library. You could even grab the books, sit down, <coughs> excuse me. So now we have more people. We'll walk down here a little further and then I'll bid you adieu. The restaurant Voltaire. Some of these bouquinis, they're supposed to be open four days a week. There's some of these I've never seen open. I don't walk by some of these places every single day, but where did all these freaking people come from? I've never seen this many people right here. But we'll go go to the Zucanese, which as you know, is trouble. But I have already run out of shelf space from the books I shipped over and the things I've been buying. Oh, there's the Queen. History of the Liberation of France. Oh, there she These are cool. They're supposed to be, Doris Day, they're supposed to sell like, it's like 75% of it's supposed to be books. But some of the ones, especially the ones closer to um, Notre Dame, those definitely have a lot less books and a lot more hot keys and little uh, French things. So I also wanted, um, I want to try to be able to figure out time that I could do some just Patreon videos some even just short special ones popping up in different places like museums and some of that kind of stuff. So it's going to be really difficult the next three weeks. I basically am working every single day. And some of those are, as I said, day and night. Um, so I'm not going to be able to do it for a bit. But if you guys are my Patreon, you want to join my Patreon, um, let me know. Because I want to start giving you guys some special little videos of things. And you can even request, maybe even vote on which ones you want to see. Claudine, can you tell us how to join the Patreon again? What's the exact address? It is just, it's Patreon and then it's uh, Blue Blanc Rouge. Ah, so okay. if you go to patreon.com and then Blue Blanc Rouge. Merci. And I'd put it there if I wasn't walking. <laughs> Look at San Francisco. Oh, I love that. For the seagulls, for my grabs. Oh, there's a little, I want to get run over. So there's a skinny little house. And I was so excited a couple years ago because I was obsessed with this. Why is it there? What's going on with it? And I finally found information in a French book. And it was, um, it used to not be anything there. And it used to basically just be a split in the buildings. And it went back and through the back, there was a house back there. And then this husband and wife got divorced. And she got part of the property and she was like, guess what? I'm going to put this in there. So she basically built that in there for a short period of time. It was the office of a newspaper, which, I mean, it seems like it's about as wide as a desk, <coughs> but they just um, finished uh, repainting it and uh, cleaning it up. 
but I love that little, how narrow that little building is. And wonder the story. Also down here, where it says Zagro, that is where uh, Jacques Chirac lived for a short period of time. Then he moved over to the Rue de Tournelle, um, which is where he died. Just, uh, I think it was September, 2019. So I was here and I was staying a block on the other side, basically the other side of the street. So it was very difficult getting home for about a week. But there's some really fun um, art galleries down here. And there is a really great art store. Very expensive art supplies. Um, but if you want to go in there and get something special. I made a video in the Lulu that I'm going to share. It's a really cool section that they set up. It's just in the Suli wing when you come in after you get your ticket scanned. Um, they usually do a, uh, about three times a year, they change out and do a different exhibit from the prints and drawing department. And it's very loud. And it's really cool because they have like show you like how they make chalk and pastels and all of this stuff. It's really fascinating. So it's yelling. So here. I don't know what these are, but I want them. Look at how cute all these little things are. They're 40 euros a piece. I have some clothing. They are to hang light artwork. Oh, see, we have some really cool ones that my grandma had actually like that one. And they were bigger and more sturdy looking. But I love those. I could get it to like, you know, hang something sweet. We've got my nieces and nephews silhouettes that we had done up in Momantra hanging from a oh, separate perfect. Oh, look what's in here. It's all wrote down. Can you guys see that? It's really reflect reflection. Look at there's the kiss. There's a picture. And this is the uh, this is so I was mentioning the one of uh, Apolline, and they thought that uh, it was a live cast because you saw the cellulite on the back of her legs. Well, Rodin got in huge trouble because they also believe that this one, and there's a larger version of the Orsay, and of course, the Musée Rodin, um, and there's one in the middle of a street circle over in the 16th. But he was accused of that also being done off of a live man. Oh, there's one of those in the Louvre and I'm obsessed with it it's by Bari. It is in the Louvre. Oh, look at that one. So cute. I might have to pop into there. I will walk you around the corner to Bonaparte and I'll show you inside of one of my favorite little contemporary galleries. They always have the coolest things in the window, including these really neat ones that are like shadow box frames, but they have, I don't the can't remember the name of the guy who does it, but they have like a famous artwork in the background. And then he has like all these little teeny miniature people. And it's kind of interesting because like one time it was on the stage and I said there, and it has these little tiny people that look like they're having a picnic. Some golden goose, shoes and clothes. Those shoes look like they've already been worn. <laughs> and they're very expensive. These have kind of some cute little bags. Look at that cute little messenger type bag. I know it's in my, one of my favorite places to get a Saint Germain spritz. I mean, I might if I'm right there. I need to get my rest. So here's the outside of the Ecole des Beaux Arts. <clears throat> it's right around Bonaparte. So this is still, you know, it goes back quite a long time. This was during the revolution. This was the, uh, what my, one of my favorite, Alexander Le Noir. This is where he was stashing all of the monuments he was saving was here. Then it became the art school, they called it Beaux Arts. And these are pieces from the Tuileries, the Palais des Tuileries right here. I mean, that's not, that is a little disrespectful to leave our garbage next to something that was the Palais de Tuileries.
they had a really cool exhibit here um, a couple weeks ago that closed all about, it was a jewelry, it was all about um, art and jewelry of flowers and vegetation. I love these girls on these window. They're so pretty. So I'll walk you around the corner and then I will say goodbye. And if you guys wanna leave a tip or anything, I'd always lovely, greatly appreciate. You could do it to my Venmo or PayPal at Claudine at ClaudineHemingway.com. Or if you go to my Instagram and hit my profile, there's a thing um, there, the Koji, that has different links, but it also says something about buy me champagne. So this isn't this gallery, it's one around the corner, but this always has kind of fun things too. So we'll try to walk here without getting killed. That Notre Dame. So this is Rue Bonaparte. And right across the street is one of those best doors. This has, look at this, this is very rude because this is, there's people coming. This is one of my favorite angels back there, guys. And look at some jerk graffitied over it. Oh, John Charles, he did it back in June. Hmm. Rude. We found another one today with uh, my client, Pam. She was like, you got to show me some of the angels. And then she goes, there's one. So we spotted one. So this is the gallery, you can see, I'll show you. Hopefully they're not. They're these guys. Look at how cute these are. So look at, there's the raft of the Medusa. And then look, it's like little people like pretending they're at the beach. <laughs> and then the young martyr here. And there's somebody that's, you know, with scuba and like some little like ambulance EMT guys, Dali. And then a Rousseau, Gaspar Mitz. They're just, I think they're so cool. I think they're really cute. But I need to come in here someday and check out some of these other ones that they have. So that's kind of, it looks like, can you see how tiny all those little things are? So I will uh, get out of the way. I'll take you by one of the greatest doors in Paris where Manet just happened to be born. But here with this amazing handle with the serpents and across, try not to get. And then of course there's the which is the most beautiful, lovely, uh, I almost said champagne, uh, perfume. And they did um, in collaboration with the Louvre a whole collection and I have the wing victory. It's delicious, I love it. And then I have my clients that I had in the spring for a week last year, they bought me the wing victory one too. So now I have plenty of it to last me forever. But it's really nice, oh, somebody's coming. Um, but it's a really beautiful store. They have a really beautiful stuff. I was trying to be sneaky guys. The guy's coming out. <laughs> so I will, uh, just get out of the way of people and say goodbye. And then hope you have a lovely rest of your Sunday. It's much easier doing this when it was 8 a.m. when I was in the first thing in the morning. Okay, did you see her hair? That was amazing. And it's not far off from where I am. I have to get my, I have to find time to get my hair done because I will show you. It's getting quite long. And also, you might notice I'm not wearing red lipstick today. I wasn't wearing red lipstick yesterday and I made a bunch of videos and I got dozens <laughs> of messages saying, where are your lips? Why aren't you wearing the red lips? People were very concerned that I wasn't wearing red lipstick. No concern. Sometimes you just switch it up. I just decided maybe I wasn't gonna wear it for the day and then I decided not to wear it again today. So, you know, it's a girl's prerogative, but maybe I'll bring it back out tomorrow. 
but I wasn't. I was just wearing this other one that I really like. That is the Ecole des Beaux Arts. You have Puget and Poussin right there, the little bus. And then I'll just take you, we'll leave you out in front of l'hôtel, which is where, of course, Oscar Wilde died. Let's say goodbye. And here's the little guy living where my he died or was born. The follow up become friends. So I will uh, say goodbye, could pop into here. Say goodbye to you guys and have a lovely, lovely week. And let me know if there's some things you guys want me to share and to show you. And let me know um, for Patreon. Maybe it's easiest that I just make the videos and share them with you. And then maybe we could watch them later. Um, but it is going to be tough because I know that the days of the week and the times, because of the nine hour difference, it's a little bit difficult. So let me know what might work for you guys. Um, and then I could start doing some other extra videos. I do also have to say there's a big, huge project I'm going to be taking on that involves making a ton of videos, actually two TV series um, that I'm going to be doing all of. And so that I am going to have to do as well. So um, I have got to get that down and that's a huge priority. So, but um, I do want to be able to have even more of the love life videos. And for you guys to tell me some of the things that you guys want to see and you want me to go to, um, because I can't go into all of the museums and share with those, um, share those things with you too. So, which I know that I don't think many other people do. Um, so let me know. And I hope you guys all have a lovely rest of your Sunday and a wonderful week, wherever you are. And I will see you guys soon. Aviento. Thanks, Claudia and Abiento. Thank you, Chrissy. Thank Bye. you. See Thanks, you. guys. Thank you. I can figure out how to turn it off. <laughs> this new system is kind of.